Okay, so welcome again. Um, so in, in this part, which is the second part of my question answering uh, system talk. So uh, I'm going to talk about the data set, which we can use to build the question answering system. Okay. So if you look at the literature, you will see that before 2015, the data sets that were available for building question answering systems they were really small, like like 2,600 questions are available in this MC test data or 500 questions are there in this process bank. Maybe that time the question answering system was that, not that much popular. But after 2015, if you see, there has been flurry of the data set. People are now creating different kinds of data sets uh, such as CNN daily, it's like news, QA system, children, book test, wiki reading. Squared is one of the popular data set by Stanford, which contains many of the factoid questions. Okay. So, and similarly, there is a data set from Microsoft as well, called MS Marco. So, you can use all of these data sets to build different kinds of question answering system. Okay. And if you see the size of the questions which are available in these data sets, like 100K questions, it's huge. Okay. So in machine learning, as we know, the more data set we have, the larger data set we have, we have better performance we can achieve, right? So nowadays, these uh, giant companies such as Microsoft and Google, they will re release, uh, you know, really big language models, right? Such as BERT and Roberta and uh, ResNet, VGG16 and so on. So many of these models, deep learning models, over the time, they are trying to, you know, um, uh, like uh, increase the number of parameter just to showcase that larger the model, better performance you can achieve. Right? So Google recently released pathway uh, network. Using pathway network, they can answer different kinds of uh, uh, questions or they can solve different kinds of problems, such as it was able to explain the joke pathway network. It was able to, uh, you know, uh, perform some reasoning as well as, you know, many different kinds of NLP tasks. So there is no limit of the tasks you can perform using this pathway network. Right? So if you are interested, I suggest you can look at the Google uh, blog, AI blog. Okay. So, yeah. So having discussed the data set, we can also talk about different kinds of models which are there for building QA and reading comprehension uh, systems. So before 2015, most, many of these QA systems were based on lexical matching or word matching. So we look for the words in the questions and which words are matching in the paragraph. So we return those uh, those sentences in the paragraph. Right? And or some people have used logistic regression for classifying the, the, the you know, right answer in the passage. But if you see, after 2015, in, with the advent of neural network and uh, you know uh, word vectors and so on, now the trend has been towards using neural network for building the QA system. And because these systems achieve the state of the art, so that's why we'll mainly look at the uh, deep learning based models for question answering system. So on the right hand side, if you see, there are many models based on deep learning, uh, deep learning, such as attentive reader, memory network, uh, match LSTM. There are lots of, I think there are 10,000 or more than 10,000 uh, network architecture for uh, building question answering system. Okay. So, so let us focus on one data set and maybe one or two model in order to understand the uh, question answering system in more detail so that you have like, uh, like, uh, like a broad picture as well as uh, you know uh, like deep uh, uh, description of one model so if you understand one model other models are for, you know very similar to that in its breach okay so let us look at the data set uh, stanford question answering data set is squat so uh, so this was the data set published in 2016 by uh, raj purkar and uh, other people so they created around 100k questions and this question was mainly uh, about triples uh, in which there was a passage there was a question as well as the answer the snippet one of, of the snippet of this data set is shown on the right side here so we have this passage we have this question and the answer right so it's a triple okay 
and how they created the data set was basically they extracted the passage from english wikipedia and they contain around the passage contain around 100 to 150 words and these questions so once you extract the passage so they gave this passage to people to formulate a question based on that passage right so based on a passage what kind of question i can ask and then uh, each answer is a short segment of the text i span in the passage so these people were also asked to answer that question okay so though this is a limitation not all questions can be answered in this way because if you are returning just one word or two word answer then you cannot answer all kind of question based on that paragraph right but just to start with something so they started a simple task so that you can at least be the minimal uh, question answering system right and quiz squared still remains the most popular reading comprehension data set and it is almost all today and if you look at the performance, human performance in answering these questions versus a computer algorithm performance, you will see that computer performance has surpassed the human performance in answering these questions. Okay, I think uh, I, I have a table somewhere in the slide uh, where you see the exact number, okay, the accuracy or the phone metric. Okay. So having understand, uh, understood the data, square data, what kind of evaluation matrices are used to uh, evaluate, let's say you build a QS system, how would you evaluate the system, right? So for evaluation, people use either exact match or F1 score, okay? Uh, and then what happens is that for development and testing sets, so what was done is that they created three gold answers because there could be multiple plausible answers uh, for a given question, right? So these people, what they did was, uh, they collected three gold answers. So, and then once you predict the answer for a question, okay, then you will compare your predicted answer with each gold answer, okay? Removing this uh, A and the and punctuations, and then you will take the max score. So you compare your prediction, predicted answer and the gold answer and you will take the max score because there are three gold answers. So you you will do like, let's say this is a question, uh, predicted answer A and these are the gold answers G1, G2, G3. So you will compare this answer with this one and this one and this one. Okay. And you see that you will take the max score out of these three. Okay. And finally, you will take the average of all the examples, uh, example questions. Uh, in order for both these uh, evaluation matrices, uh, exact match and F1. Uh, so here uh, uh, on your screen, you can see that uh, on this squared data set, the exact match score is around 82% and F1 is 91%. So just to illustrate how uh, the evaluation matrix is computed. So let's say we have this question and for this question, the, there are three good answers. Uh, like uh, what the question was, what did Tesla do in December 1878, the answer is left grays, left grays, and left grays and C word all relations with his family. And the predicted answer is left grays and third. Okay, so exact match. If you see none of these three gold answers matches with the prediction, so exact match is zero zero zero, and you take the match. So eventually you get zero score. But if you compute the precision and recall, and you compute the F1 score then you will see the uh, FN score for each gold answer is around 0 0.67, 0 0.6, and 0 0.6, and then you take the max, okay? So in order to compute the FN score, you have to compute precision and recall, right? So uh, if you are interested, I suggest you can look at the wiki page, uh, how to compute precision and recall between two sentences, and the rest of the things would be very simple. And let's say if you are interested in uh, exploring other data set uh, which are available for building QA system, you can also use uh, this data set called Trivia QA, uh, which contains the question and answer by Trivia enthusiast, independently collected uh, web paragraphs that contain the answer and seem to discuss question. But this data set is not uh, verified by human which supports, okay, uh, let's say you build a question and there is no verification that uh, you know a paragraph supports the answer to the question. Okay, and then second data set is called natural question, uh, which are the question drawn from frequently asked Google search questions, and answers from Wikipedia paragraphs. Answer can be substring as no or not present, verified by human annotation, 
and the third data set is called hotspot QA. Uh, it is constructed questions uh, uh, to be answered from the whole of Wikipedia, which involve getting information from two web pages to answer a multiple step query. Because sometimes the questions are not like easy, they cannot be answered in one go, right? So it takes uh, some reasoning basically you have to perform. Okay, so having understood the data set, uh, now let us uh, see, um, you know, how can we formulate this problem in, uh, in a more mathematical way. So our goal is to build a question answering system on the square data. So what we are going to uh, do is that we will see how can we represent the passage or paragraph or the context and how to represent the question or query. Okay, so let us say that we have n words in the context, the passage, and we have m words in the qu query. Okay, and our that's, that, that would be our input, and the output that we are going to return in the answer it would, is the span, let's say, from which section to which section in the paragraph, uh, there is my answer to the question. Okay, so there are two uh, more uh, most popular. Uh, uh, QS system uh, architecture. One is based on LSTM based uh, with attention, and second one is based on fine tuning the BERT model for reading comprehension. So, from 2016 to 28, the most popular the state of the art model for question answering system was based on LSTM, but now the trend is towards uh, using the BERT like architecture for uh, question answering system. Okay, so here is a very big picture of these two uh, models. On the left, you see uh, LSTM based model for question answering system. And on the right hand side, you'll see that uh, the model is based on uh, BERT encoder and decoder for extracting uh, answers from the passage. Okay, so in the next part of the video, I will talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, how uh, I will talk about these models in more detail. So I will stop here.